Well, as I have said to several of you in my increasingly tired, joking way, last night we had a big dinner in the parish hall for the Delaware Astronomical Society. I tend to say astrological because it's funnier, but you know, you'd have to meet the guys who were doing it to understand what I'm talking about. In any case, it was a big thing, a sit-down dinner for like 65 people. And because it was you know, their annual banquet, and it was a lovely event, they used our china and our silverware. And so when we were getting ready for this yesterday, Kena was saying, well, if you'll come and give them instructions on how to run the dishwasher, they'll take care of washing the dishes. A very sweet thing for them to want to do. But of course, I blanched and said, no, please don't let them run the dishwasher because it is increasingly aged. It is cranky. You have to know exactly how to use it. You have to know what to do with the dishes, which is basically wash them completely before you put them in the dishwasher. And so I came in this morning and found that they had very obediently done exactly what we had asked. They rinsed everything off, and there were dishes and silverware for 65 people sitting in the kitchen. So I ran the dishwasher like 25 times this morning and did all the dishes and put them all away. <clears throat> and everything got done the way it was supposed to get done. Now, I'm telling you this story and belaboring this because today is a particular day in the church's calendar. Four times a year... There are what are called the Ember Days, a Wednesday, a Friday, and a Saturday. What this means most particularly to some people is it's the day when they have to write a letter to the bishop to explain what they're doing in their life, those people being those who are moving along in the course of, of becoming ordained. Once you go to seminary, once you are in a certain stage of the process, you have to begin to write these letters. But more than that, it's the days when the church is supposed to be praying for those vocations and more broadly for vocations in general. I mean, I tell you the story about me washing dishes, which was funny enough in my black getup this morning, uh, because it is something that was not, not necessarily considered in any letter that I ever wrote to the bishop. <laughs> and yet it is right there in every lesson that we read just a minute ago building on what someone else has started. I think we have to recognize that our vocations often have very little to do with what we might imagine they're going to be. There's really not room, much room for saying, well, that's not my job in the kingdom of God. All sorts of things come along that we never really thought we were going to do, and yet somehow they are for the good of the kingdom of God. So today, I would invite all of us to be praying, not simply for those who might be discerning a call to ordained ministry, or indeed those who are calling, discerning a call to any sort of ministry in a formal way, but to every one of us in, in terms of our own vocation, that we wouldn't overlook those things that come to us unexpectedly as a new or different part of what it is the kingdom of God is calling us to do not to imagine that we know exactly what it is we will do for the rest of our natural lives as followers of Jesus, but perhaps something new will come along. Perhaps we will be building on what someone else has begun. And in all of that, we are somehow doing what it is God desires each one of us to do, whether it's washing dishes or, or baptizing people and everything in between. All of it is in some way the work God has given us to do. Let us pray that those vocations, all of them, will be built up in our hearts, will be fortified in our hearts so that when the time comes and we see that work, we can respond with joy and reap what it is that God has planted already. Amen.